Earning money has become even harder. The Chinese live streaming army has moved outdoors, with all corners crowded from the early mornings. The explosive growth of live streaming in China has become a global phenomenon. On the banks of the Xiangjiang River at 1 a.m., some of them are slapping their backsides with their shoes, some are washing their hair with soy sauce, and some are rolling on the ground. Yes, that's right. This is in the streets of Changsha, Hunan Province, where hundreds of live streamers are shivering by the river before dawn. Some of these live streamers have formed a group, creating a circle of light under the overpass to support the live streaming. Many netizens have asked, "Is the involution in the industry so serious now, forcing the live streamers to turn their stage to the outdoors?" Not only in Changsha, but also recently in Guilin, Guangxi Province. A large number of live streamers are doing their live broadcasts under the overpass on a cold night. A female live streamer at the scene said, "There are too many indoor live streamers. The market is saturated." She is in tears as she says that it is too cold. Sometimes I cannot withstand it when it's zero degree. But for survival, she has to choose to broadcast late at night to earn better income from the traffic. Another said that some people will look at them with disdain. And questioning why are they choosing to broadcast in the middle of the night? Therefore, they choose a location that is away from residential areas. This type of occupation, broadcasting outdoors in the middle of the night, has attracted the attention of the authorities. According to the Hubei news outlet Jimu News, in April last year, the Guilin Traffic Police and City Police cracked down on the disturbance caused by outdoor live streamers. But it did not result in the disappearance of this kind of a phenomenon. Instead, it brought about a new wave of benefits. Some live streamers gained more than 10,000 followers during the few hours of the live broadcast, earning more than 50,000 RMB a night. At that time, industry insiders revealed that although outdoor live singing may seem like a low threshold, high income job, not many people actually make money from it. Most of the successful performers appear to be beautiful, and this is a short-term job that most anchors cannot stick to for too long, usually lasting around three months. In addition, those who want to switch careers in the future will also face various difficulties. In response to this odd phenomenon caused by the live streaming chaos, many believe that it is a warning sign of rising unemployment in China. Because China has been affected by the strict pandemic control in the past three years. Coupled with the China-U.S. conflicts, has resulted in foreign capital leaving the country, causing employment issues in China to gradually surface. U.S. Wall Street Journal has reported in February that China's National Development and Reform Commission issued a management measure at the beginning of this year, calling on the industry to use labor over machinery and use local workforce instead of professional operational teams. Analysis suggests that the Chinese Communist Party's workforce relief policy reflects its concerns about rural laborers losing their livelihood opportunities. According to Radio Free Asia, after the Lunar New Year, the official return to employment did not start as expected. A large number of migrant workers and white-collar workers who were looking for jobs have become a surplus labor force. Not only it is difficult to find jobs in state-owned enterprises. But many migrant workers are owed wages. In just one week, from February 13th to 20th, due to the severe employment situation, there were at least seven serial murders. People at the grassroots level are facing a stage of a breakdown. Chen Hongtao, a left-wing media figure who has been focusing on labor issues, believes that based on the information he has received from people around him, it can be concluded that there is a basic difficulty in finding employment. However, there is no accurate statistical data. He believes that the Chinese Communist Party officials do not care about the livelihood issues of these bottom-run people. According to employment-related data from the National Bureau of Statistics of China, only the data from the first 11 months of the year released in December 2020 stated that the National Survey urban unemployment rate averaged 5.6 percent, with the second quarter having an urban unemployment rate of 6.1 percent. But these figures have been met with criticism. As early as 2004, People's Daily, the CCP's official media, publicly pointed out that the total number of landless farmers in the country is estimated to be about 40 millions, and the number is increasing at a rate of more than 2 million per year.
In 2020, China Youth Daily quoted that there were 100 million landless farmers. During the pandemic lockdown period, the CCP government did not provide basic statistics, let alone basic unemployment or relief assistance. Regarding the above figures, foreign journalists have made repeated calls to various departments of the Ministry of Human Resources and Social Security, but failed to get a response. When it comes to live streaming, we have to mention Northeast China. The three provinces in Northeast China with the lowest GDP are the places with the highest number of live streamers. Live streaming has become a pillar industry for the development of Northeast China economy. During 2016, when China's live streaming industry sprouted overnight, the industry report released by Tencent Technology showed that among the top 20 live streamers, about half or more were from Northeast China. At the end of 2020, Chinese TikTok's competitor Kuaishou's platform data showed that amongst the 108 million Northeast users, those located in the three Northeast provinces exceed 46 million. The proportion of creators in the three Northeastern provinces on TikTok is also not to be outdone. In 2019, among the top five videos with the most views on TikTok, three of them originated from Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang. However, for the live streamers in the Northeast, this is not something to be proud of, because it is a result of the younger generation finding a new way to survive and make a living in the face of unemployment. This is very different to the West, where many people become a live streamer due to their own choice. At the beginning of the Communist Party's rule, the Northeast was the most concentrated area of large industrial and mining enterprises in China. The Northeast heavy industry base not only promoted regional economic development, but also provided support to 11 third-line provinces across the country without considering the cost. However, in 1986, Shenyang Explosion-Proof Apparatus Factory became the first public-owned enterprise to go bankrupt in Northeast China. At the end of the 1990s, a large number of employees of state-owned and collective enterprises suffered a wave of unemployment. Unemployed parents became the childhood memory of many Northeastern people born in the 1970s and the 1980s. Northeast anchor Zhang Bowen said that his hometown Fuxing Liaoning was once known as the largest open pit coal mine in Asia. The entire city was almost developed by coal mining. He said, by the beginning of the 21st century, we started seeing the exhaustion of the mining resources, and the economy was bound to go downhill. The younger generation doesn't remain in the Northeast. Those that have the capacity would go to other bigger cities. In the local area, civil servants and working at public institutions were the only jobs considered proper in the eyes of parents and relatives. As of 2010, the cumulative net population outflow of the three northeastern provinces over the years reached 2.19 million, a fivefold increase compared to the 404,000 net outflows in 2000. The proportion of non-agricultural population outflows was as high as 42.9 percent. In the traditional social class, limited by family background and educational level, the Northeast younger generation who dropped out of school early could not find decent jobs locally. The image of live streamers in Northeast China in the early days also indirectly confirmed this phenomenon. They were the people who had a low level of education in low-paid jobs and only started being involved on the internet by coincidence. For example, streamer MC Tianyu dropped out of a junior high school and first made a living by selling skewers at a food stall. The founder of another popular streaming platform had originally making a living by repairing cars. CEO of Wuhan Shifei Technology, who was also once a live streamer, recalls that the rise of the YY live streaming platform mainly depended on these Northeast live streamers, such as MC Tianyu. The live streamers in other regions are not very competitive. In the age of barbaric live streaming, hundreds of young people flood into live streaming platforms, and the Northeast live streamers occupied half of the industry, enjoying their moment under the stage lights. However, in the eyes of many Northeast elderly, the profession of a live streamer is not fundamentally any different to a busker. Neither is decent nor glamorous, and there is no job security. Since I chose to be a live streamer, my family was extremely against it. Zhang's parents are both from the military, and in their eyes, working in the factory of Foxconn is more decent than being an anchor. However, for the Northeast, where the unemployment rate is rising year by year and the population loss is increasing, 
Live streaming is one of the few low-threshold, high-income occupations that young people can find. Taking advantage of the traffic bonus from the platform, Northeast live streamers can earn an average income of 10,000 yuan in a month. According to Momo's 2017 industry report, the three northeastern provinces are not only the areas with the highest professional recognition of live streamers, but they are also the group that can endure the most hardships. In the statistics of provinces with more than eight hours a day of live streaming, Jilin, Heilongjiang, Shanxi, and Liaoning rank among the top four. But after experiencing the glory, the live streamers who were there since the very beginning were also facing industry reshuffle. The increasingly stringent live streaming policy has also brought many challenges for the Northeast live streamers. Many popular live streamers were banned because of breaking the law with their broadcasts. Chinese authorities' tightening censorship has greatly limited the content live streamers can create. Austin Lee, who had showed a tank made of ice cream in his live broadcast on the eve of June 4, 2022, was considered by the authorities to reflect the 1989 Tiananmen Square incident. This top social media influencer had disappeared for a few months, even failing to participate in Taobao's annual shopping festival. Another top social media influence, Viya, who was on par with Austin Lee, was also banned for tax evasion. Seeing the experience of those live streamers who had once earned so much, many experiencing a sympathetic feeling with one of its kind. Thank you.